This is Witchbase News for Friday the 6th of October 2023 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...an in-depth analysis of the aerodynamic qualities of Elite Dangerous ships ...and as the subsurface extraction missile is released we look at just what it takes to go titan mining. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content and if you'd like to help directly support the burr pit you can also join our Patreon ...links to that and everything else are below. It has always been the case that Elite Dangerous is a game that brings out the smarts in its player base. Whether it's websites and third party tools, unusual ship builds and tactics or understanding and then manipulating the eccentricities of the background simulation system ...the ingenuity and barefaced intellect of the Elite Dangerous community always makes its way to the surface in a way that is seldom witnessed in many other games. Enter then Commander Sovereign Winter who has today published through Canon Research three pieces of work and I use the phrase pieces of work quite carefully and deliberately in this instance for they are indeed collectively and individually quite a piece of work. In short Commander Winter has used computational fluid dynamics to analyse and then graphically demonstrate the performance characteristics in an atmosphere of two ships from the universe of Elite Dangerous ...the venerable, trustworthy and reliable Sidewinder and the combat manoeuvrability oriented Alliance Chieftain. The three articles break down into a lengthy explanation of the methodology, software and modelling techniques used followed by two equally lengthy analyses of the aforementioned Starship's performance. I won't pretend for one moment to understand entirely what is contained in the work of Commander Sovereign Winter. I love the effort involved and the pure joy that is apparent in making the effort however. Suffice to say whilst Elite Dangerous contains elements of simulation in its makeup it is very much a game pretending to be a simulation. That's one of the reasons I like it so much and the ships contained within it look like they should work but they were of course never actually designed to really do the things they do on screen. The conclusions that Commander Winter draws from their analysis are likely to not surprise many ...particularly when it comes to the performance of something like a chieftain at hypersonic speeds. Reading about the catastrophic interactions of hypersonic shockwaves is no less entertaining for it however and I'd encourage anyone with even a passing interest in this stuff to take a look at the documents and in particular their enclosed animations. They are absolutely fascinating. The subsurface extraction missile, the Xeno rescue equivalent of a thermonuclear bath towel ...somehow slipped past any semblance of health and safety verification and entered unlicensed service amongst the general populace yesterday. Following the usual Thursday server bounce in the magic window of opportunity between community goal cessation and the installation of common sense protocols the galaxy's first ever rocket propelled explosive rescue munition went on general release. Not only is the Save Me Salvo now in general circulation but the bubbles many rescue megaships are now paying coin to the general populace for the successful return of extracted human filled Thargo pods recovered from deep inside Titan space. Any and all available commanders are being encouraged to embark on this perilous mission and use ordnance no less to save already likely traumatised if not brutalised victims from the Thargoid menace. The rescue equivalent of sending a bloke wearing speedos out on a jet ski to rescue workers from a burning oil rig in the North Sea using a shoulder launched anti tank missile. Which honestly sounds like the plot of a Jason Statham movie. If you're curious on how you too can participate in the explosion based rescue a thon currently being experienced by the bubble then here's the process. Ideally all you need is a really fast ship heavily engineered for hull and speed ...it would be a distinct bonus if it ran cool as well. Then aside from collector limpets at the very least you'll need caustic sink launchers, a Thargoid pulse neutralizer, a pulse wave xenoscanner and the extraction missile launcher. 
All of this can be purchased at the Bubbles Rescue Mega Ships. The Caustic Sink Launcher is the only device that, somewhat curiously, requires unlocking via Rescue Mega Ship Tech Broker first. When suitably kitted out you'll need to start running the gauntlet of hyperdictions from Thargoid interceptors, scouts and glaives. When you make it to the Maelstrom system any Guardian modules you have will shut down as the Titan emits a Proteus field that damages them specifically. Bear it that in mind if you're running with Guardian enhanced weapons or an FSD booster in particular. Once you arrive at the Maelstrom itself expect extreme caustic damage, patrolling Thargoid craft and caustic generating explosive proximity mines. If you've managed to blink anywhere in all this then maybe store a few up. You're going to need them. As you let the sinks soak up the caustic damage use the neutralizer to get through the shockwave pulse and after a bit more caustic damage you're at the Titan. I wouldn't make any short term blinking plans however because now you must avoid the attentions of the huge city sized megagoid and its numerous patrolling interceptors, scouts and glaives. Once you arrive at the surface of the Titan you're now firing off the pulse wave thingy looking for green hotspots. Only then can you fire an exploding drill missile into the correct hotspot and after the minigame completes successfully the space around you will be filled with floating human filled xenopods. It's still not time to blink however instead you'll stare nervously at your limpets as they scoop up the hapless rescuees anticipating a glaive or some other unworldly horror to show up. Then and only then can you run back through the cloud of caustic death, mines and Thargoid glaive gankers ...thank you Alec Turner for that analogy ...get out of mass lock and jump away to eventual safety and a blink fest the like of which the world has never known. Get the pods on their own somewhere quiet for 2 minutes and have a listen. You can hear what appears to be breathing. Survive all that commander and you can cash in your pods at a rescue ship for the princely sum of about £2.50 and some positive influence on the war. For me personally the same result could be achieved in the war doing something that is quicker, easier and far less stressful. If the end goal of what FDEV were looking to achieve here was peril then this loop absolutely delivers that. The problem from my perspective at least is that the gameplay reward at the end of the peril isn't worth it. I think there is absolutely a portion of the player base that will enjoy the trip to the Titans and the whole AX riff involved in making it achievable but I do think the current implementation is excluding a huge swathe of the player base that just won't have the kind of time, patience, motivation or skill set to achieve what's being asked of them. If the end of the Titan story is mining pods from the exterior of the ship then that strikes me as a huge waste of a really cool Titan. As things stand we're not it seems to engage in an alien-esque on foot experience to shut down the titans heart or disable the proteus field. I think we'd all be on board for that. But if I want to go subsurface mining I can just go subsurface mining. It's quicker, safer, I make more money and I'm not subjected to multiple rebuys. Are you equipped and ready to visit the Titans? Have you tried extracting pods from them yet and if you have are you compelled to carry on doing it? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.